What's going on everyone, Jack here from Hackroom. Today I'm gonna to talk about these. These are the Beta FPV VR02 and these FPV goggles are aimed for the beginner. Now, they cost less than $50 and they're not a bad option, but I wanna talk about a couple of things. How do they compare to the VR01s, which seemingly have a few more options and they're only $5 more, plus how do they stack up to, you know, something like Sky Zones um, or even uh, the Orcas? And, you know, there are cheaper options out there. Should you just offer something less expensive for like 35, 40 bucks? Plus, uh, you know, making sure you're on the right channel uh, when you're flying seems pretty easy, especially when they include auto search buttons. But I'm going to give you two tips to make sure you're always on the right channel. Stay tuned. All right, so first let's talk about these, the uh, VR02s. And like I said, they're less than $50. Um, the antenna is internal, right? So you don't have to worry about something breaking. Um, and there are really only three buttons, change your channel, change your band, and auto search. Uh, they charge via USB-C, and this is your on-off switch. Now it is a box style goggle, and they're a little bit smaller than the VR1s. You can see the screen eh, does a nice job. You can see pretty clearly um, decent beginner goggles. The screen on these is pretty bright. It's 800 by 480, which is like 480p, so it's not HD, but analog anyway, right? So let's go ahead and click the search button, right? And it's going to search inside here, right? All right, you can see that it found my channel pretty easily. Now it actually found the wrong one. I'm on race band one, it put me on E4, which is close, but as I fly, I get further away, I'll get some more breakup. And that's pretty consistent with really a lot of auto searches. They don't do the best job. So I'll show you how to make sure you get the right one in just a second. But first, let's talk about how these compare to the VR01s, right? So these are $49. These guys are gonna check in at 55 bucks. So five extra dollars, what's the difference? Well, these are a little bit bigger. They're also a little bit brighter. Um, I just kind of flew a handful of packs with both of these and some other goggles just to kind of compare so that I could really kind of uh, talk to the different points. Now these you can see also on the right channel. Um, but that's because I put it on there. Now something this one doesn't do is remember the last channel you are on. So when I turn these off, I get a search again. When I turn these on, it was still on race band one, which is what my quad is on. You'll notice these VR01s have two antennas. That's gonna give you better reception. People will ask, well, how, how far can I fly with these goggles? Really, there's no real answer. It's dependent on so many different things, right? The drone that you're flying, the output power of your VTX. Are you flying inside or out uh, through walls? Do you point your head down when you're flying? Because if you do, like I do, um, on a patch antenna like these, that's going to matter. So um, what else do you get with these? So they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit brighter. You have the two antennas, so you'll get better reception. We have a few more buttons that are a little more intuitive. I think they're labeled search, uh, power, band, and channel. We also have a record button, that's right. Uh, you can put an SD card in on top here, and I have done that, and you can record your flights. Now you're thinking, well, I'm not a YouTuber, why do I need to record flights? Well, what if you crash and you can't find it? Go back and uh, review that uh, DVR footage. So when it comes down to it, at 50 bucks or 55, I would definitely go with the VR1s. They're a little bit nicer, they have a few more features. Unless of course you really just want the simplicity of these, right? There's nothing, you just throw these in the bag, there's no antennas to break, they are really simple. So if you wanna save five bucks and go with simple, go for it. But what about something like this, right? They have on Beta FPV's website uh, a pair of goggles similar to these for about 35 bucks. Now, I just find them not comfortable on my face. Um, they're just a little bit small. This plastic piece pushes in on my nose. Um, you know, these are, these are great for a child maybe, but um, you know, they'll get the job done. But again, probably not what I would recommend. What about low profile goggles? Well, these are what I fly on. They're not the best, they're actually the Orcas. These things are awesome, right? So why do I not use the Orcas well? Again, it's just a matter of preference. I like the way these feel on my face. 
And yes, I can put a rapid fire in my orcas, but since I generally fly DJI when I'm going long range or flying far away, I don't need the extra reception that I can get on something like these. These are like 600 bucks. Um, I think Chris is gonna try these out and uh, maybe make them his daily driver. But I like the Skyzone O30s. The OLED screens are fantastic, right? So the clarity you're gonna get out of this way better than something out of these. Um, and the field of view on a box goggle generally is wider, right? So the wide field of view, it's a little bit wider on these bigger VR01s than the VR02. So there's something else to be said there. You know, you're kind of almost looking from side to side to see everything that's going on, which can be distracting, but again, you kind of get used to it and it's a personal preference. Now you'll also notice if you're a glasses wearer, you're not gonna get glasses on under either one of these. So box goggles, another advantage there. So all of these goggles have this built-in search feature. And like I said, I don't think you should use it. You gotta know which channel you're on. And there are two tips I have for you to make sure you're always on the right channel. The first one is inside Betaflight, turning on the channel on the OSD. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I just connected my Meteor 65 to my computer with a micro USB card, and I'm launching Betaflight here. So uh, I'm going to connect. Then I'm gonna go down to the OSD tab, okay? Now on the OSD tab, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna scroll down here to the VTX channel and make sure that that is checked. It's gonna display what channel I'm on and also what power output uh, from my VTX. That way I can see on the screen what I'm looking for. All right, so I already have it checked. Uh, I'm gonna click save. So now when I put these goggles on my face, I can see in the upper right hand corner, I'm on race band one and the VTX is outputting at 25 milliwatts, which is what I want. So now I know that I want to be on race band one. So if it finds something like E4, which is close, I just switch mainly to race band one. The other thing you can do is set your VTX up using your remote control and change your channel. So let me show you how to do that. Now you have to have smart audio set up. Um, a lot of the quads now already do, so you're in luck. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to change your channel using smart audio. You need a pair of goggles, of course, and your remote control. So I'm connected uh, to my quad. I'm gonna push the throttle to the left and push up on the right stick. I'm gonna go down to, I'm gonna go down to feature, push right on the right stick, uh, go down to VTX Smart Audio, push right on the right stick, and here I can change my channel, race band two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And I can even change my power uh, output if I want to. Now, I'm gonna leave it at 25 because this drone only does 25. Now I go back to set and uh, I'm gonna see <laughs> that it actually is going to go blank because right now I'm on race band one and I'm switching to race band eight. So I click set, confirm yes, and I've got static. Why? Because I just switched to channel eight. All right, now I just switched to channel eight and boom, you can see I've got picture, so that's how that works. So you can use smart audio and I recommend turning it on and I recommend turning on your OSD so you know what channel you're on. That way you can make sure you're always on the right channel. Hopefully this was helpful. If you're looking for a pair of goggles, hey, we've got links down below. If you wanna pick up the VR02s, the VR01s, or if you're looking for something better, you know, if you really want something low profile, you want a really good picture, I like these O30s or if you need the best, that's the Orcas. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you check us out on halfchrome.com. And uh, if you want a free drone, you're definitely going to want to sign up for our Patreon. All links to that down below in the video description. Hey, good luck and happy flying.